Well, good day once again. Good day once again. Uh, today we've got a, uh, a fairly short but very important uh, video about court and how we've been caught so many times because of the way we've been taught, we've been caught up in their system. And now we're going to try and extricate ourselves from the system. So we need to find out what the definition of a court is. And uh, if you have a look on Merriam-Webster, this has probably given me the best definition of uh, court that I've seen. Uh, 1A, the residence or establishment of a sovereign or similar dignitary writing to the king's court, a sovereign's formal assembly or councillors and officers, the king held a general court, the sovereign and officers and advisers who are the governing power, the court has decided against the alliance, the family and written blah, 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 blah. But let's look at this here. The establishment of a sovereign. Okay, so if we're going to establish ourselves as a sovereign, we have to have our own court. So um, keep that in mind as we go through this. We're going to go through a, a fairly circuitous um, route to get to the final thing, but the establishment of the sovereign is the setting up of your own court. So let's get to it. For too long we've relied on their court system, and when we wake up to the fact that the paper is a court, then we'll get a clearer view. Now this, this became abundantly clear to me uh, earlier on this year when I took a document into the court and uh, I swore an affidavit and then uh, went to put my seal on it and the registrar grabbed, this, grabbed the paper and said, held it to her chest, both, hand, both hands in both corners of the document and said, this is my court. Now I realized at that stage that the court is a piece of paper. So uh, once you realize that since 1933, the um, the only form of currency that we have had is the paper so the paper is the money it's not only the uh, it's not only the court it's also a geographical location now that may come in handy when you're trying to amend the record as you saw in a previous video okay let's let's start the journey as i said it's fairly circuitous so the post, post office the place where letters are received to be sent to the person to whom they are addressed. Two, the post office establishment of the United States is of the greatest importance to the people and to the government. Get that clear. The Constitution of the United States has invested Congress with power to establish post offices and post roads. So who do the roads belong to? That's why we don't need an address. Uh, three, by virtue of this constitutional authority, Congress passed several laws anterior to the third day of March. Well, that's interesting. That's my birthday. Uh, shoot, not, not 1825, though. I know I'm old and ancient, but not that old. When an act entitled, an act to reduce into one the several acts establishing and regulating the post office department was passed, it thereby enacted, one, that there be established the seat of the government of the United States. A general post office under the direction of a postmaster general. Okay, now, when you realize that the post office is the seat of government and the postmaster general is uh, the, uh, the head of that, you will know who the government is. Now, I'm not going to read the rest of it there, but I would would encourage you to pause the video and read through the rest of it. There is a lot there worth, um, worth knowing, and this is from Bovier's Online Law Dictionary. You can go there and read the whole thing. There are many other parts to this. I've just taken out a couple of parts that I thought were very, very relevant. Okay, moving right along. Um, there's there's been some stories going around that the Universal Postal Union has uh, all sorts of functions, but I went on to the Universal Postal Union, and this page was put up on the 16th of April 2018. The Universal Postal Union's attention has been drawn to various correspondences being circulated via email, on websites, or via regular mail or fax, 
falsely stating that the UPU has the authority to confer official recognition upon alleged sovereign citizens or to grant some kind of formal status to such individuals. Now, I just showed you in the previous one where the true power lay, but just interesting. Now, I encourage you to go there because it's quite a long article, and if you just saw the arrow pop in at the top there, that is the website that you go to, and you'll see it's quite a long article, but I encourage you to go there and have a look for yourself. Okay, now, once again, Merriam Webster um, has come to my aid here defining the definition of registered mail. Mail recorded in the post office of mailing and at each successive point of transmission and guaranteed special care in delivery. So we're talking about registered mail here. This is why we're going through post office, universal postal union and all the different things, because we are going to be using these services. Okay, registered mail is the highest order in the post office. Now, to establish our sovereignty or court, we must first establish our registry. Now, we've relied on their registry, the registry of birth, deaths and marriages. And as you heard in the previous video, the only two courts of record in New Zealand are birth, deaths and marriages and land information New Zealand. So now we're going to have our own registry, the, the registry of Billy Boy. Okay, so let's look at what a register is. Evidence. You don't need to go much further than that. A register is evidence. A book containing a record of facts as they occur, kept by public authority, a register of births, marriages and burials. Although not originally intended for the purpose of evidence, public registers are in general admissible to prove the facts to which they relate. Now, the next part is uh, quite interesting. I'll let you uh, pause the video to read that, but I want you to look at number four here. In North Carolina, a parish register of births, marriages, and deaths kept pursuant to the statute of that state is evidence of pedigree. I'll highlight that, evidence of pedigree. Once again, we're saying a register is evidence. Okay, now that's evidence of our pedigree. Now, the register under common law, the certificate of registry granted to the person or persons entitled thereto by the collector of the district, comprehending the port to which any ship or vessel shall belong. Okay, now, we're going to have to be, if we're going to be amending our record, we will need to be identifying our vessel, would we not? So, now, in establishing our registry, we know where we have the evidence and where we have to go. It's a very simple process, but we must have a good filing system. We'll, and you will also need a few other items. So we'll go through those items now. One of the post, most important items you will need is a stamp. And here we go. Certified true copy. Okay. Get, a, um, get one made. They only cost a few dollars. But the registrar, you just need to Put a squiggle there. Don't put your um, don't put your real name or anything, and put the date on which you certify the copies. Because you're going to see by the end of this that you will never go to a justice of the peace, notary, or anything like that ever again. But you're also going to need a seal. Now, uh, the easiest seal, of course, is the thumbprint. I sometimes use my thumbprint, but I also have another seal, um, which makes it more official looking. But uh, that. That's only my personal uh, um, uh, way of doing things. Now we are set to make judgments, our own orders and judgments. Now we're set to make our own orders and judgments. So um, don't ever go to them asking for them to do it for you. Otherwise, you're under their system. And this is what we're trying to get out of now. We have to do all our own judgments all our own paperwork, otherwise we're under their system. Now this is one that I just did, and uh, I'll just draw your attention to the right hand top corner there, you will see a stamp. Now, 
Uh, $1 stamp is the best stamp, and if you can get one with the words O-N-E-D-O-L-L-A-R on it, all the better. They're, they're very, very, very hard to find now. So I've got one there with $2, as you can see. Now you'll see that there is a date stamp across there when I cancel that. You'll also see my seal. And then alongside that, you will see my registered delivery with the number of it. Now, whatever you're going to be doing, whenever you go to any correspondence, use that um, seal uh, to, uh, to show them that it is registered. So it's now a registered order. Okay, in the matter of set aside, void, order, or judgment. I'm not going to show you the whole document, but... Uh, 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 I'm looking to recall of judgment under district court rule. Okay, so uh, well worth knowing this sort of stuff. Now we're able to uh, amend any record that the government has on us because man's record is the highest and although they will not be able to alter their record, they can add a memorial to the record. And if you go through the legislation, you will see that they can add memorials. They cannot alter their records because those are theirs specifically to them. Ours are higher. Never forget that. So now I'm going to go through the process with you and it's uh, you write your own letter or judgment or order. You write them yourself. Okay, the second thing you do is you put the $1 stamp on the top right, which I've shown you in that uh, thing. Uh, you cancel the stamp with the date and the seal. You put registered mail barcode on the top right. You saw that in the previous example. You can always rewind the video and go back and have a look at that. Now, here comes the important part. You take photocopies or scan, okay? Best if you've got a scanner to, to scan it. Once you've done that process of putting the stamps and the um, uh, the registered uh, seal on top of it. Okay, put letter, the judgment or the order into a registered mail bag and post to yourself. Now that is the one. Now it's most important that when you take the um, the um, registered mail barcode off, that you take the one with A, not the customer copy. You don't want to be the customer. You want to be take the one with the A on it. Okay, you, now, any of the photocopies, you must use your certified true stamp on the photocopy and send the copy, again, by registered mail to whoever has, has been attacking you. All right. We always keep the original for our own record and we only ever send them photocopies of the original. As our record is the highest and all, we must never allow them to put their stamps. Never go to them and get them to do anything for you. No, 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 no. So in summary, never give away your sovereignty by allowing anyone to stamp or sign your documents. Always keep the original. And, you know, I, I would suggest getting a, a, a good book and putting these things in the book so that if ever you have to, uh, you know, if ever they drag you kicking and screaming anyway, you, you, all you need to say is, let's compare our records. And when you compare the records, you will see uh, that your record will stand as the truth, not theirs. Your court of record must be kept up to date and meticulous in order to be superior. Hope that's going to ha help a few of you uh, guys out there to um, to get through this process. and. Uh, Please feel free to share and uh, add comments in the comment section below. All the best.